Hello and welcome back to Fred in the Shed 2 on this second and final part of this Walesco tractor kit build. Now where we left this in part one was I'd assembled the boiler and the flywheel and the piston. Now I wasn't really happy about this, I thought about this all the time I was on holiday. Um, yeah, it just kind of hadn't gone together how I'd hoped there was a little bit of play in this sort of shaft here on the sort of flywheel. And uh, yeah, I wasn't really happy about that. It just sort of felt a little bit rocky. So I decided that when I came home, I would take it apart and put in some washers, which I ordered whilst I was on holiday. Some extra washers here, just to act as sort of shims so I could take some of the play out of the flywheel. Another thing that sort of wasn't happy about was this uh, sort of con rod going into sort of the piston. When it goes to the full end of its travel, and I have put some oil in, I have oiled it, but when it goes into the full end of its travel it seems to sort of catch on the end and uh, yeah it just kind of doesn't feel smooth, it just feels like it's slightly gritty at the end of its travel and I was a little bit disappointed with that. I haven't had noticed that on any of my other sort of mammoth models. And when you sort of attach the uh, sort of the connecting rod here to the, it's, it's, it feels sort of okay but I'm just sort of wondering is when this runs is this going to cause the engine to stop and possibly stall. So just a couple of sort of concerns at this stage but I'm going to crack on with the sort of build. I've got these steam pipes to get in and they were really really tough the first time around. I don't want to cross thread those and then once I've got the steam pipes in I will start the build. I'll play some music and I'll speed it all up and if I come across any significant problems or things I want to sort of show you I'll stop the video and uh, explain it in more detail so watch out for that. Don't skip ahead because you'll miss it but let's get on with it. <laughs> so I've had to resort to a little bit of this, this dismantling here just to get these steam pipes in. They feel incredibly tight I think as I mentioned on the first video I'm not happy to sort of force them so I've decided to take the whole thing apart get the bottom one in and then sort of try and get the top feed pipe there in the boiler and then finally the last one to do is the exhaust it's all a little bit kind of too tight and intense I think for these little tiny threads I just don't want to strip one of the threads on either the piston there or the steam feed or even the exhaust so uh, yeah having to sort of go back a little bit and just take my time and uh, yeah it's a little bit it's a little bit fiddly it's a little bit sort of um, frustrating just uh, got to take your time really and I have fitted an extra shim here to just move the sort of drive gear away from the flywheel so it doesn't catch but it does feel a little bit loose so that might rattle when I actually run the, the engine itself but I can't really see a way around that but that aside, I think overall it's a much sort of better fit. Certainly the con rod and all the connecting sort of mechanism there seems to sort of work better now. It was getting caught before. So anyway, I said I'd speed this up, didn't I? So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to speed it up now and get on with the build. And uh, yeah, cheers. Thanks for watching this bit. Right, just thought I'd stop all the fast forward bit and uh, just explain a little bit that's got me a little bit perplexed at the moment. <laughs> I'll probably sound a little bit stupid, but I'm going to fix the worm drive here for the steering. And we've got this bracket, as you can see here, and this sort of roller effect that goes in. And the instruction says uh, the chain is wound on both sides of the worm, which I've done one side to the left, one side to the right. The worm is placed into the bracket and secured on the right hand side with a crown wheel. Well I kind of get that, that's going to the sort of steering column we just put in, but how do you get that in the bracket? 
because you can see there's the bracket is just drilled with two holes and this needs to slide in one side and then you've got to somehow put the other bit in and um, without bending the bracket as you can see there's this bit here I don't know if you can see that can you it's about a quarter of an inch about two mil or so and well the, the only way I'm going to get that in there is by forcing the bracket and bending the bracket basically there's, there's no other way um, didn't really want to do that but I've got to just give it a little bit of a bend with the pliers snap yeah it goes <laughs> and that's the two chains there which I think I need to let a bit more chain out don't I yeah we can we think hopefully we can do that we can do that so yeah that's a little bit odd you know it's a show, I don't know if that should have been sort of a slot or something that it slipped in and locked in with a nut and bolt but bending it with pliers hmm not so keen about that anyway let me sort this chain out and then we can get the crown wheel on Well, unfortunately, cocked up, made a mistake, had to happen at some point, it's been going really, really well. Okay, just coming to do the steering sort of column here where it goes through the top of this boiler cap. And you've got these little, what they call safety caps, it's a lot of press caps, and these hold the axles, the wheels onto the sort of axle. Now, right, right at the very bloody beginning, you know, one of the first things I did was I pushed these sort of safety caps onto the front axle now what I didn't realize because it's very hard to sort of when you look at them is that one of these is four mil and one of these is five mil and uh, what I've done I've used one of the four mils on the axle here and basically I now need a four mil to fix the steering shaft I've only got fives and they just sort of fall off so I'm in a bit of a dilemma what to do you can't really prise these off because I tried what I did was on the mammoth if you do manage to get these off they pretty much sort of butcher themselves and they're pretty useless after that and also they are damaged the inside of the wheel so a bit of a choice here I think what I might do is what I did on the mammoth steam roadster and that is I might just cut a very small thread on this shaft here and uh, use a nut and bolt not quite as pretty as one of these little sort of chrome caps but on the other hand it is quite useful in the respect that should I have it have to take this apart in the future again I've been I would be in the same situation to remove one of these caps would damage all of this sort of boiler cap so if I have got a thread on there it's gonna take me a little bit of time I can would be able to sort of you know remove this much uh, easier and, and simpler without any breaking anything so that's what we're gonna so do out into the garage and gonna try and cut a thread just on the end there and I uh, just um, run a small die over it a bit difficult because of course got the wheels attached so I can't get it vertical in the in the vice <laughs> not the best not the best arrangement but uh, I'm gonna do it off camera because I can't do it one-handed so yeah hopefully that will come out all right I'm sure it will so there you go I've just cut a little thread on that put an M4 sort of nut on the end I don't know if it's gonna look as good as that little chrome cap that went on the end but as I say the advantage is I can take it off in the future to do any sort of maintenance at the end of the day you know my mistake made a mistake right at the beginning on these little end caps there one's four one's five uh, just didn't realize that just one you know hard to tell and uh, yeah there you go so a mistake it's cost me a bit of time but all's well that ends well so let's crack on with that build got that uh, little bolt or little nut on the end of the steering shaft there so yeah i think that's okay doesn't maybe doesn't quite look as dressed up as a uh, little cap there but uh, anyway it works also you've got a little bit of sort of suspension if you like a little bit of travel there so right next thing is to uh, get the steering chains connected
so that's it the model is finally built and i'm very very pleased how this has turned out and these things are really really nice to own especially in 2019 they're sort of quite heavy they're solidly made it's all metal only a couple of little tiny plastic parts on the whole thing and of course you've built it yourself you've got that sort of pleasure knowing that you've built it yourself and some people would just keep this as an ornament it would go up on a shelf they like to look at their models totally get that but i'm not like that i want to see this thing under live steam and that will be the next video coming up hopefully in a few days time you will see this thing fired up for the first time i want to see the steam coming out of it i want to smell that steam oil kind of burn off i'm just like a big kid because of course you know these were toys these were made in my opinion to be powered up under steam and driven so as i say that will be the next video um if you're not already subscribed yet please consider subscribing hit that bell notification you'll know when i put that video up but that's it for this part two of the build i hope you've enjoyed it if so give us a thumbs up that always helps the sort of channel but it just remains for me to say cheers your view time is always most welcome on fred in the shed too and yeah take care of yourself i'll see you on the next video for the steam up so cheers and bye for now